Fixed Axis Pulley. So far, pulleys have been used in items like Atwood's machine, that's over here, and to allow for the horizontal and vertical motion of two objects in a system. For example, if we have a block here on a table, and we have a pulley here, so this block is going to pull down, and this block is going to go in this direction. So the force is being redirected. Both of these systems use fixed axis pulleys as the pulley's axis of rotation, right there or right there, does not change relative to a stationary reference frame like the ground or a beam or a table. For this chapter, we will be assuming a massless pulley and this massless string and that there's no friction between the pulley and its axle or the string. This allows us to ignore the effects of rotational motion in the pulley. And we will get to that a couple units when we'll be talking about moment of inertia and angular velocity and things like that. But for now, we're not going to worry about the pulley. It's just changing the direction of the force. So in both of these cases, the tension on either side of the pulley is the same. So the tension over here equals the tension here. And then for the Atwood's machine, same thing. Except in the Atwood's machine, it's the same magnitude, but it has a different direction. So for example, if the block on the left is 100 newtons, you would need a block of 100 newtons on this side to keep it stationary. We're still going to use a fixed axis pulley, but we're going to try something different. In the below picture, we have two window cleaners, window cleaner one, window cleaner two. They are sitting in harnesses. The picture doesn't show it, but the two lines from each harness, right, here's one over here and here's one over here, loop over around a fixed pulley on the top of the building. Okay, so we have a pulley over here, one, one rope comes down here, one comes down on the other one. We will assume the window cleaner on the left has a mass of 82 kilograms and the harness is 21 kilograms. What force does he need to exert to stay stationary? Of course there are safety features associated with the harness, which will enable him to stay stationary without hanging on, but to simplify the problem, we'll assume that the cleaner needs to exert a force to stay where he is. As with all dynamics problems, we'll start with free body diagrams. What forces are acting on the window cleaner and the harness? First force, the rope that he is holding with his hands is pulling him up, and that is a tension force. The harness seat is pushing him up with a normal force. And, of course, the window cleaner is pushing down on the harness with an equal normal force, Newton's third law, equal and opposite. In addition, the rope that is attached to the harness is pulling up on the harness and the window cleaner. And, of course, the last one, gravity, pulling down on the window cleaner and the harness. Now go ahead and draw free body diagrams to the window cleaner, the harness, and the combined system of the two. Just like we did in the previous unit when we were doing the sliding blocks, we had free body diagrams for the two participants in the, in the uh, experiment and also one for the combined system. Here is the free body diagram for the harness. And you can see we've abbreviated with the lowest case H. You have the rope tension pulling it up. You have the normal from the person sitting on it pushing it down and gravity pulling you down. Here's the window cleaner, WC. We have the tension force of the rope again, the normal force from the harness pushing up on the window cleaner, and the mass of the window cleaner pulling them down due to gravity. Now if we take a combined system, we have the mass here, which is the mass of the window cleaner and the harness pulling you down, and then we have two tension forces here. There's two ropes that are connecting to the system. One, the window cleaner is holding. The other one is attached to the harness. So the normal forces, right here and here, notice how they don't show up on the combined system. That's because they're internal forces and will not affect the system's motion. The tension force, of course, is the force the window cleaner needs to exert to stay motionless. What do you notice about this force? There are actually two tension forces acting on the system, and they're both the same. 
The window cleaner is holding onto the right rope with the force that by Newton's third law is balanced by the tension for force in the rope that's pulling him up. He pulls the rope down, the rope pulls him up. We also have the tension force over here, which is dealing with the harness. These two tension forces are equal to each other in magnitude, and in this case in direction, since the rope is assumed to be massless and it's not stretching or compressing. The force that the window cleaner is pulling down on the right section of the rope transmits itself throughout the entire rope. So what's our next step? Think Newton, of course. We will apply Newton's second law to the system. We'll sum up the forces in the y direction, and we have the two tension forces we'll take up as positive, minus the mass of the system, which is the window cleaner and the harness, equals the mass times acceleration. Now we've said nobody's moving here, so the acceleration will be zero. We do a little algebra. We come up with the tension force is the total mass divided by two. So we go ahead and plug in the numbers, substitute in, and we find out that the window cleaner needs to exert a force of 505 newtons to stay where he is. So pretty straightforward, but let's look at the result. What's interesting? Here's a clue. What's the weight of the window cleaner and the harness? The weight of the system is 1,009 newtons, but because of the pulley configuration, the window cleaner only needs to exert half of the force to balance the gravitational force. Why? Doesn't this look like a violation of the work energy equation? We'll start the window cleaner, we'll just say zero energy at some reference point. He does a certain amount of work and he's at the final position where the energy is going to be this. Right, the mass of the combined system times g times delta y, the potential energy. So that means the work you have to do is this mass times g times delta y. But instead of using mg, right, we would like it to balance out, he's only using a force of the mass of the uh, window cleaner himself plus the harness divided by 2. So this number here is cut in 2. How is that possibly going to equal this work done. It looks like he's only doing half the amount of work. What are we missing? So let's put him in motion and see what happens. The work required to lift an object of mass, and now we're just going back to some general principles, is F dot D, which turns out to be mg delta y because the force is acting in the same direction as the displacement. So we're going to have the window cleaner increase his height above the ground by delta y. So what force is required for him to achieve this, assuming that he moves at a constant velocity? We're going to ignore the acceleration when he starts and stops, and that's going to let us do what? It'll make Newton's second uh, law a little simpler for us. Here's the key point, right here. Think about how far the rope is traveling. Not how far the harness and the window cleaner is traveling, but the rope because that's the distance, d, that the force is acting over. It's acting through the rope. Is that the same as the height, delta y? And here's the trick right in the first sentence. Each side of the rope has to move up a distance, delta y. Right, so let's draw, let's say, well, let's use the right thing here. Here's the uh, system, the window cleaner and the harness. And here's the two ropes. And if we want to go up, a distance delta y, all right, so now he's up here. What happens? Each rope has to move a distance delta y, okay, because you're going from here up to here. So each of the ropes has a delta y distance. So therefore, the distance over which the force is applied has to equal 2 delta y. The distance the rope is moving is this piece plus this piece. So we do our sum of the forces in the y direction. We're assuming a constant velocity. So we have the two tension forces minus the mass of the system, and that will equal MAY. A is equal to zero. So we come up once again with our tension force. This was the same as when it wasn't moving, okay? Same deal, not moving, moving at a constant acceleration, or is, excuse me, a zero acceleration. You get the same tension force. So now we want to calculate the work. We've already seen how we thought this would be problematic, that our force being exerted by the window cleaner is half of the weight of the window cleaner and the harness, but that is the force he's using. Here's the thing that saves us. 
the actual distance that the force is acting through is twice the change in height of the system. It's 2 delta y. So when we multiply those together, 2's cancel out, and we get the work is equal to the potential energy at the new place where it's the uh, harness has been raised. So the windows cleaner's force, the window cleaner's force of the mass over 2 times g is enough because it exerted over a distance of 2 delta y. So the work energy equation still works here, which is very nice. So the key is half the force, double the distance that it acts over. Now that we've shown that the reduced force obtained by this arrangement requires that it be exerted over a greater distance, let's move on to another question. The window cleaner pulls down on the rope, and along with the harness, he accelerates upward at a rate of 0.330 meters per second squared. What force must he pull with, and what is the force that he now exerts on the harness, his normal force? Let's start with the system free body diagram, this one over here, to find the tension in the rope, which is equal to the window cleaner's pulling force, and then pick either of the individual free body diagrams to calculate the normal force, right here, the force that the window cleaner exerts on the harness, and of course, the force that the harness exerts on the window cleaner. So it tells you how much he thinks he weighs, right? Because that's what that normal is. Solve the combined system first, that's over here in the red ink. The sum of the forces is the two times the tension force minus the combined weight of the system times g equals the mass of the system times the acceleration in the y direction. So we rearrange, do a little algebra, and we come up with the tension force, which is the force that the window cleaner has to pull with, is equal to that. We substitute in our numbers, and notice that the acceleration that the uh, harness is moving upward is added to the gravitational acceleration. And we find that the tension force is now 522 newtons. That's greater than the force that was required to remain stationary. That makes sense. We'll now solve both the harness and the window cleaner free body diagram to show we get the same result for the normal force. It's a little extra physics. First, the harness system in red right here. So the sum of the forces in the y direction is the tension force in the rope minus the normal that the uh, window cleaner pushes down on the harness with minus the mass of the harness times g equals the acceleration of the harness. So we do a little rearrangement here, and we find that the normal force, which is what we're looking for, is this expression. We factor the mass of the harness, substitute in the numbers, and the normal force that the window cleaner exerts on the harness is 309 newtons. Calculate the normal force for the window cleaner system. That's right over here. And we have two forces in the up direction, tension and the normal the one force down, which is the weight of the window cleaner. And we rearrange to solve for normal, substitute in the values, and we find that the normal that the uh, seat exerts on the window cleaner is 309 newtons. Well, what's another name for the normal that the seat exerts on you? Well, that's what your apparent weight, okay? So that's what the window cleaner is going to feel. Now normally, the window cleaner, I shouldn't say the word normal, but the window cleaner, if he's standing on a scale in his bathroom, nothing's moving, he will weigh 804 newtons. 804 newtons. Now this time, if he's sitting on a scale, it shows that he only weighs 309. So that kind of makes sense too, right? Because he's able to lift up his whole body with half the force you would normally use. So that makes sense. So he feels like he's lighter because right? this is what he'd weigh just standing on a scale on the ground. And the other good thing is we get 309 newtons for this solution and this solution that shows we're consistent, and that's lovely. We took two real conditions here with the fixed axis pulley. One was where we merely redirected the force, so that was in the case of the Atwood machine like this. Okay, or when we were pulling a box along a table, here's the pulley, and you had the weight going down like this. The only benefit we got out of that is you could 
choose where you want it to stand to lift an object, right? Because if you're lifting this guy here, you don't have to just lift it above your head and it could fall on you. You could stand off to the side with the pulley and lift it that way. But you'd still need the same amount of force to lift this with the pulley if you were just lifting it over your head. Same thing. Okay, but then we came up with the second condition. And what did we have there? Let's say we had a box and we put our cells on it this time. And we'd pull here. And then we had a pulley up here and the other end was connected to the thing you were standing on. In that case, we got an advantage. We reduced the force needed to lift the object and yourself in this case, but it had to be exerted over a greater distance. We're now going to move on to the case in the next chapter of the movable pulley, where the pulley's axis is not fixed, and see if that can reduce the lifter's required force even more.